another segment of Curry's Questions. We've got Billy in the hot seat, and nice of you to join us, Joe. It's probably a little bit late, but that's okay. We'll deal with that. Um, I'm going to start with Joe because I know Joe really likes me, and he wants to. He always loves to have a chat with me. Uh, Joe. Uh, <laughs> So, just off topic, just quickly, you're always wearing a blue jacket. Are you an Everton fan? No, Liverpool. You're a Liverpool fan? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I've got more respect for you now. No, in all seriousness, Joe, um, you've been riding for PR Racing this year. Um, been looking good on the bike. You've just got the new bike now. Um, but it hasn't been all smooth sailing for you. How have you been going? It's, it's not been the best bike. It's Obviously, you see with Tyco and Smith, it's not, it's not a bike you can win on at the minute. It's just not... I don't know. It's everyone said it was good when it come out. The first impressions were good, but as you sort of try and get, you feel like you get make a bit of headway with it, and then you make two steps back. It's just not an easy bike for anyone. So other than that, it's been it's been good learning, but as you know, it's not an easy championship. So we just got to keep on plugging away. And uh, moving forward for next year, um, obviously you've had a pretty you know solid ch- uh, season really for PR PR. You know they they haven't exactly you know done won lots of races and stuff and I, I see what you're doing on the bike and I and you know I have a lot of respect for you. Moving forward, um, obviously you're quite happy with the team. The team look like they're working quite well with you. Do you want to remain there and move into the next year with them? Yeah, that's that's obviously an option. We've got the option to stay there, but we, there's a few things I I feel like I need changing. They want changing, but I think that's where I will be next year. Is is back with them and. It seems the right thing to do with only having half a year on, on the new bike. we sort of got to give it a proper shot with, with a good winter test. So I think, yeah, that will more than likely be the outcome, but we just have to get the last bit sorted and then go from there. Have you been happy overall with your results this season? Um, what have what was your expectations moving into Superbike? Um, obviously, did you do a couple of races at the end of last year? Moving into this year, what was your expectations? Are you happy? Yeah, I think there's been a few times I've thought, and I've never sat on the bike thinking when I'm behind people think I can't do this. I'm just we're just lacking a bit in some at the minute speed, straight line speed's a big thing, and when I'm behind people, I, I know what I can do, and it's it's not an issue. So I think a few more I would have been would have been nice getting a point sooner and try and build a bit bit more momentum quicker, but that's just we've just been a bit unlucky in the sense with we had to wait so long for the new bike, so. On that old bike, it was a struggle, but now, now I've got my points. I can know I can do it. It's just a matter of time and, and learning. Why did it take so long for the new bike? Obviously, the um, the bits and stuff like that for BMW have been a little bit slow coming, and uh, I'm aware there's a lot of BMWs out there riding quite stock, which I'm sure is pretty much the same for you. Um, why is it taking so long for the team to do that? Was that a commitment issue of buying the new bike because they have all the bits, or was it because it just wasn't available? It just wasn't, just wasn't available. I think we ordered it in November last year or something like that, and we got told it'd be there for February. We were actually booked on for the official test in Spain, and it just didn't come. It just we had to keep waiting and waiting, and then we actually had it. What did we have? We had a bike there at the round one, other than the uh, wiring loom. So we had to wait till midway through the season just for a wiring loom and then, then we could use it. But it was just sat there looking at us until then. Thanks Joe for that. Uh, we're going to move over to Billy. Billy, we've got probably loads to talk about. Your season's been quite eventful. Um, you've, you've, dealt with, <laughs> you've dealt with some health um, problems. Um, you've had an injury. Um, it hasn't been really smooth sailing as you would have liked. Yeah, definitely not. You know, we had uh, appendectomy, they call it. Um, we had an abscess in the stomach, which was surrounded by the appendix. So uh, we had a drain pipe in there for nine weeks in emergency surgery to get out. So it looks like we got hit in the stomach with an axe because it's all over the place. And then, yeah, come back from that, my OMG Suzuki team were brilliant. They stuck by me, didn't put no one else on the bike. We come back and uh, we had a fourth and a, and a third. And then, um, and then we got put on the superbike when Luke had a crash and hurt his uh, foot. And we had a good race there. We got a, a, a ninth and a 14th, but we got a jump start, so it put us back to 17th, 18th. Um, but yeah, it was all it was all good. And then we uh, got to Alton Park, and the first session on Friday, I was riding Josh's bike, which was quite a lot different than, than Luke's bike, just with different clutches and stuff. And the gearbox was actually really damaged, and the clutch was really bad and juddering all over the place. So, uh, and then they, they changed it, and we we're thinking probably more about that. And then uh, as we're going into the chicane, 
on the stock bike, you sort of go down two gears into the chicane. And on the super bike, you just rev third out. Then as I go down a gear, then as I was pushing my foot back, I actually accidentally hit the auto blip. So I just give it 160 horsepower inside the tire while I was braking and just end up in a massive sort of tank slapper in the jar and then hit the ground and broke my uh, left clavicle. So uh, that's all being plated now. The team took the bike to Aston in case we wanted to ride it, but for me, it just didn't, there was no, no real point really. I've missed most of the year anyway. And, Unless you're going for a championship, the superbike class is hard enough when I was fully fit, let alone trying to ride wobble around with a broken collarbone. So, yeah, I decided to sit at home and uh, give uh, the plate as much chance to, to regroup, and we're going to have a go next weekend at Donington. Obviously, in Superstock, you've had some fantastic results. You know, one of the fastest out there, come straight back from, you know, injuries and you know, health uh, issues and challenged straight away for a win. Um, super bikes, obviously, you know, most people's gold that want to get in. Um, but obviously, that being said, you want to be on the correct package because, like you said, it's hard enough when you're not fully fit. So, next year, um, do you see yourself contending for a British Super Bike Championship with OMG or challenging for a Super Stock Championship or actually moving away from OMG? And I definitely don't want to really move away from OMG. Just, um, you know, most teams probably would have kicked me out the door or put someone else on my bike, so my loyalty to them and all my other sponsors to stick them by me. You know, we've only done four or five meetings for them. So, um, you know, we're in chats with them anyway. You know, I'm, I'm good friends with them and um, want to stay there. I think Mossy's, you know, obviously been confirmed on the Superbike and um, we can hopefully I'll be Superbike or super stock, which they're moving to BMW, which the BMW stock bike is really good. You know, we've seen Taylor hop on that straight away and almost come from the back to win twice. Um, so, you know, the bike's really good, and super bikes is, is, you know, everyone thinks you can do fast times in super stock or sport, like we've both done, you think, you know, I'll get on a super bike, better brakes, better horsepower, and, and you'll be there, and then it's completely opposite, it takes you about three days before you can get nowhere, anywhere near your super yeah. stock time or super stock time, and you, I think the people at the front of super bikes got a really strong head, and they're obviously really talented, and you only have to have one bad weekend, you start to dwell upon it, unless you can redeem yourself straight away, um, you end up sort of in a bit of a hole. So I've done super bike three years before, so uh, I sort of know what to expect to go back into that. And you've got to be really mentally strong, you've got to really believe in your team and everything from the build up to Spain all the way through your fitness and staying healthy and, and stuff like that is really key. Where in super stock and sport, you can't really change a lot. So you can't also get in a massive hole. So you've got to be in a good team, but everyone around you that knows how you work and with the right people. So it's very crucial which, which way you go, if it's stock or sport or superbike. And superbike, because you can change so much stuff, if you've got a team that sometimes don't really understand you or how you work, you can really easily work away from it. So, um, you know, and when you're not getting the results, you know, the rest of your life pretty much revolves around racing, so that all sucks. Yeah. When you're in sport or super stock and you're getting race wins, you know, you're happy all three of So it's it's having a goal and setting it. You know, if I said I was going to go win British Superbike Championship next year, I'd be joking, you know. So, you know, to make the showdown would be like winning the championship for us. You know, you can't, you've got to respect the boys, in it. You know, Scott Redding, you know, he's getting, he's not getting all his own way and he challenged Marquez for a championship, you know. The, the championship's tough, you know. So, uh, yeah, either way, I would like to stay with OMG, but that's up to them. So, uh, you know, sort of, you're only as good as your last result and I haven't had really many results this year. So, uh, yeah, try to speak to the team and hopefully they can stick by us and we can have another crack at it next year at something. It's hard to really follow after that. I don't really know what you've covered most things. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think really what we could say, but obviously, um, you know, next season, if it was to go down the Superstock 1000 route, who would you see as your main contenders? Obviously, Cooper keeps coming um, back and forth sort of between the classes, doing really well in Superbike but really dominating in, in, in Superstock. Can you see yourself really challenging him if he stays in Superstock next year? And do you believe you can win the championship? Yeah, for sure. You know, I know you, you know, Cooper's a brilliant rider and he can ride anything, but you know, I beat him in Super Sport Championships, in uh, Super Sport Championships before. And you know, uh, the, best, the best thing, the Cooper's you know, really fast and his weight definitely helps him. And I think on the Suzuki, I've always had tire life issues where I spin it too much. Um, so hopefully maybe with the BMW, um, it might not look as cool, but hopefully go a little bit faster <laughs> on it. But you know, um, you know, everyone's beatable. It's um, the best thing I like about the super stock is there's not a lot you can change, and you can just look at yourself and go, "Fuck, I need to go faster." And that's that's it. Where super bike got so many variables from factory decays to different parts to bolt on stuff to headstocks, angles, everything else. You can get so confused unless you've got a real positive 
feel from it. So in Superstock, I definitely think I'm one of the best riders. You know, we had three tied to laminations, which I think, you know, cost me the championship when I went against Farmer. So um, I think, you know, you know, it's, it's everything's got to go your way as well to win a championship. But as, as long as I'm winning races and up the front, I'm, I'm happy no matter what class I'm in. Joe, do you think uh, with a superbike, obviously there's lots of, like Billy's saying, there's so much to do. Obviously, you've had great results right through your career in Superstock 600 and in Supersport winning races. Um, you know, which is winning races at that level is obviously a really hard thing to do, and not many people get to experience. When you got to the Superbike, did you expect it to be a little bit easier with um, obviously setting up, getting the bike set up, and going out there and racing, or do you just find it a minefield? I think it, it's a hard question because a bike's a bike. So you can ride it to a certain degree, speed quite easily. But then to have that final bit, which in, in Superbike, there is there's that much to change where if you don't get it right first time on a Friday, you, you're just chasing the whole weekend. And it's just, that's where you see, you look at a, a Superstock bike, say the Superstock BMW this year, you can get that out, out the crate. And at one point at Alton Park, that was going quicker than me with the latest swing arm, head start, all this. So it's quite easy. The thing with Superbike it is, it's just so easy to get wrong. And they are hard, they're not hard to go fast on, but a lot of variables, variables have got to be right. And I'd say one of the biggest things is your team and your crew. If you, as you know, with electronics, is the Superbike's got no electronics, but it's one of the, the biggest parts of it. And one of the other parts is, if you haven't got the right people around you who know what they're doing, then you, you, you're starting from way far back as before you've even got to the ground. So I'd say the people and, and the package is, is the biggest thing. Do you think, um, this is dragging on a little bit, but we're getting in depth here, we're getting serious. So a uh, question for both of you is, do you think people overlook the fact, you know, maybe people that haven't raced in the bike or maybe some teams, managers, team owners that maybe don't quite have the technical understanding that I say a rider would. Do you think it's quite overlooked the fact that, you know, say people finishing from 15th back in, maybe even 10th and back in Superbike, it gets overlooked that uh, you've got all this gear, why aren't you doing a job? And you look at Superstock 1000 and you go, well, he's doing that on a stock 1000. Do you think it gets a little bit overlooked in that sense where people don't actually understand how hard it is to get a superbike to click? And if it's not clicked, how average you can be made look by someone like Scott Redding and Josh Brooks. Do you think that's that's one key area in, in this sport that's overlooked? Well, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing that's overlooked in superbike is if you're running around 15, 16. If you look at the field in there, each rider that's all the way down has won a race or been high up in another championship around the world. So like, you know, for us, some weekends he run around 16th, 17th when he was on the podium last year on Superbike. So I think in Superbike, as riders, we know that the field is tough and that, but you know, it's no different to if we went and watched ice hockey, if you looked at, well, figure skate or whatever, if you look at someone in 15th, 16th, you'd be like, oh, they're no good, you know, but you, you've got to get into the sport to know that. So as far as team managers and stuff like that, I think, every, you know, they never want to say that things bad or whatnot, but, and it, I think it comes down to a rider is like, you know, Cooper's runs at front on a, uh, on a super bike, and then I raced against him and Bradley on my super stop bike last year, and we had a pole against it, but overall in the race, that would be faster, but then he switches back to a stocker, and I think the mind switches because he's been up in super bike, you go back to a class, and you just think instantly you're going to win it, and your mindset changes, so, Sometimes as a rider, you've got to question yourself where if you go in with the same mentality in Superbikes, you might be in a different place. So it's, I think it's a, a big mental game and it's um, it's very tough to, so it's always very easy to point the finger at a bike and that, and as it is for the team to point a finger at a rider. So I think it's both things believing in each other, which makes it all possibly to work. So I think if you're with the wrong people and they don't believe you, you can instantly feel that off them without you even, you know, with them just giving you the, feel what, with a little negative comment and if you've got a weak mind you can let that get to you and then it, and it can wreck your whole year or for a long time so you get a good result and you tell them you give the finger and so, <laughs> that sort of thing so you know I think a lot of the especially with road race it's all in the head you know what's a lot of the documentaries on the you know inside the outdoors and the AMA and stuff like that so a lot of it's mental and a lot of it's you know 
as much as training is a part of it, but that's just to get your mind strong so you can think you're the best one on the grid. So it's, I think I think team managers and stuff like that, you know, that's that's what they, it's easy for them to look in, but they've got to justify their job to the sponsors and everything else. So it's a lot easier to point your fingers at the rider, and it's a lot easier for riders to point your finger at the bike. So it's just a combination of everything, really. All right, well, I think we'll wrap it up there. You don't want to add anything to that. You're really happy. Um, yeah, it just got real serious in here. We're having fun before, and uh, Billy and <laughs> Sorry, Joe <man>. turned up. <laughs> no, um, thanks for watching Curry's Questions, and good luck for the rest of the season, boys. Cheers. Joe, uh, favourite colour? Uh, purple. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd be blue there for a second. <laughs> purple. Uh, he's the only guy in the world that would have picked purple there. That just threw me completely off. I'm thinking blue, red. Okay, uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. Um, Liverpool or Manchester? Liverpool. Um, chicken or beef? Chicken. Favourite track? Alton Park. Okay, he's really good. We're going to go over here. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll do a similar one. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. Favourite track? Cadwell. Uh, what? Cadwell. Cadwell. <laughs> um, um, okay, favourite motorcycle brand? Trying it. Um, Favourite, oh, I said that. Uh, chicken or beef? Yeah, I put a chicken. Beer or wine? Beer. Um, Australia or England? Australia. <laughs> okay, that'll wrap it up. <laughs>